So, uh, okay, Misha will show you demos of how all this stuff works. So hello everyone. Uh, unfortunately, I missed my flight, so you will be seeing me through this recorded demo. So uh, let's get right into it. So first I'll demo the mesh gateways for console and then talk about some of the layer seven features that console have and show you some demos there. So here we have a really simple um, you know, web application or a web store. Um, and that's running in Kubernetes. Uh, and this is kind of the modernized infrastructure that we are running. And then we have a legacy application called Payments that's running somewhere in a virtual machine uh, completely on a different network from Kubernetes. So these are completely two separate networks, uh, two separate data centers. And then we have a currency service uh, that's also a new modernized service running in Kubernetes. So the way this web store works is, is this is the, the, the web service is the front end to the web store. It gets a request, it talks to the payment service, and the payment service makes a request to the currency service, and that's how kind of the request flow is. So now you'll notice, since they're on two different overlapping networks, we have these gateways, the, these console mesh gateways that are set up at the edge of these networks, and these are the only things that are allowed to talk to each other. Um, the web pod cannot talk to the payments VM directly, so there's no way to route the request that way, uh, except for the, uh, except for kind of going through the gateway here. So here we have two different console data center. One data center is running in Kubernetes, the other data center is running in virtual machine somewhere, and they're again on two separate networks. But as Mitchell might have mentioned, um, the console was uh, multi-DC uh, out of the box, multi-data center out of the box since like, it's been, I think, four or five years now. Uh, so all we can do is, all we have to do is kind of join these two clusters using a WAN, uh, using WAN gossip, and then once we do that, uh, these gateways should be able to see each other and we should be able to route this request to this mesh gateway, even though uh, the, these two networks are uh, kind of com completely separate. And all these apps will be kind of console and this like, you know, console unaware and won't understand like, this complex uh, complex networking. They just need to make a simple rest call and kind of talk about how that works in the, in the demo. So here, uh, let's look at this uh, Kubernetes cluster. I have this Kubernetes, I think this is a three node cluster. Yeah, so this is a three node cluster running in AKS. Uh, so let's look at our first web application quickly. So I'm using Terraform to deploy the Kubernetes uh, deployment. Uh, you can yeah, write YAML if you like YAML. In this case, uh, you know, um, I just, I've just written some HCL to, to define this uh, web service. So uh, you know, this is nothing surprising for folks that have seen a Kubernetes uh, deployment before. So I'm providing a, um, a Docker image here and, and naming the container to be web and defining some ports and some environment variables, very straightforward. But the, the main thing here is, are these annotations. So uh, console, if you install it using a console helm chart, installs something called a console uh, sidecar injector. So we're able to inject uh, a sidecar, uh, which in this case is Envoy, uh, that allows you to do that you know, service to service communication it's, and it's responsible for the request routing, actually routing the packets here. So all you have to do in your Kubernetes deployments is to just to say connect inject true. And then in this case, I'm providing an upstream call payment. So again, you'll notice I'm not providing an IP address to the payment service or telling the, uh, telling console that, hey, you know, uh, this payment service is on this network or anything like that. I'm just providing a, uh, a name, a logical name of the service, which is payments, and then also providing a, a port that I want the service to be available locally for this web service to consume it. And then providing the web service name. In this case, this name is optional. If you don't provide a name, we use the container spec to get your name. Basically, so in this case, it's just a web. Uh, so that's our web service, and uh, and it's running Kubernetes. As you can see, there's two instances of these services running here. So I'll quickly show you the the payment service, which is running in a VM, and I'll show you uh, this just to show you that this is actually running on a separate network. Uh, so let me just SSH in here quickly. Yeah, okay. So if I do an IF config, you'll notice the, the IP address is 10.0.2.6, and if I go back to my other terminal and do a get nodes and a wide. Uh, you'll notice the IP addresses are completely different. So they are on two different networks, um, and just to confirm that. And this payment service is running locally, so I can just do a sudo service uh, payment status, and it'll show you that this is just a systemd job that's running. It's the same, uh, it's the same uh, Golang application that the web service is, which is the, the fake service. Uh, in this case, um, it's just it's just running with a different set of outputs and so on. That's it. And also, uh, this payments uh, gateway or this payments um, sorry this payment service is is, is on a completely different console uh, console uh, cluster as well. So as you can see, I have a console server, a gateway, and a payment service uh, that's running on this uh, console cluster. And this DC is called VMs. Um, and if I do a WAN lookup, 
uh, we should be able to let me just go back to the console server here and I'll do a van lookup here to show you all the data centers that are part of uh, part of the van uh, gossip pool here so you can see we have two data centers uh, one is the, the one that's running in Kubernetes and the one data center that's running uh, as part of the VMs. So th those are the two separate things that you saw in the diagram there. All right, so that's all set up. Now let's actually try to make a request to the web service, which I have open in the browser here. So if I make a web request, I get uh, a 503. This is totally intended and I'll, I'll kind of explain why. So this kind of gets us to, to this idea of intentions that Mitchell might have uh, kind of brought up. So in this case, the first intention that I've defined here is that none of the services by default are supposed to talk to each other. And, and let me let me actually create the, the whitelist for us. So, so the first thing I'll do is kind of allow the web service to talk to the payment service. Payment. And I'll do an allow. And then I'll create another rule that allows the, the payment service to talk to the currency service. This is an allow as well. So this kind of completes that that you know that flow. So web to payment, payment to currency, back to Kubernetes, and this should happen transparently. So as soon as I hit refresh, you are able to see all the calls are going successfully. The the interesting thing is, you know, the, this kind of makes the whole there's like two different networks that kind of view as a as a flat network. Uh, and you know these applications aren't aware about the kind of the logistics behind how the request is routed here. So we have the web, uh, the, the web application calling these app upstreams, uh, the payment, the payment upstream, and payment is calling another upstream, which is the currency, and they all are getting responses. And yeah, this is all done through uh, an enforcement of intentions, and also done using uh, using the mesh gateways directly. Okay, next I'll quickly show you uh, you know the logistics behind how this actually worked and how the resolution works and how do you define these resolution rule, rules in console. So in console, we have something called a service default. And in this case, we are defining a service default for the web service, that's the, the front end that you see. And I'm defining the protocol it's supposed to use in this case, it's just HTTP, we support other protocols as well. And then I'm defining a mesh case with stanza and saying that this should be in mode local. What that means is, uh, if I go back to the diagram here, so what that means is the resolution, uh, you know, for 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 the services should should be kind of it should be using the local gateway that's in the data center. You can also use other modes like remote gateway. In that case, the web uh, service could directly hit the gateway on this other side, um, uh, on the virtual machine side. Um, and so there's other options, and there's also option for none, in which case you won't hit any gateway. So there's it's pretty flexible. So in this case, I'm using the local gateway and then allowing it to transparently forward the request to the other gateway um, here. So, okay, and then we have this other idea of a service uh, a service resolver. So payments, we have a, a, a similar definition for defaults, but let's talk about the resolver for payments. So in this case, I'm saying that uh, to resolve payments, I wanna use, uh, I wanna redirect the request and and, and, and make sure that, that that goes to the data center VMs. Uh, the data center here is the console data center. So in, as, I, as I mentioned earlier, a console, we have here two data centers, one's running in Kubernetes and the other data center that's running using the VMs on a different network. Uh, so that's kind of the, the two things here that are defined behind the scenes that are allowing you to do that service call trans transparently. So there's not a lot of configuration that you need to do in order to, to use uh, mesh gateways uh, and I hope this was useful uh, to kind of understand kind of the concept behind mesh, ga mesh gateways here thank you hello everyone I'll quickly demo the the SMI implementation for HashiCorp console uh, so if you've used uh, the console helm chart uh, to install uh, console cluster in Kubernetes you have an option to install the the console SMI controller that comes with the helm chart so you, you know it's pretty automatic when you install it so here I've already installed it, it's already running. And I'll quickly show you some of the SMI policies here. So uh, we are still following the same example that you saw uh, that you saw in, uh, in the mesh gateways demo. We still have the same set of services, the web service, the payment service, and the currency service. So, but now instead of uh, kind of doing the intentions using the UI, if you remember, I'm gonna use uh, the I'm going to use the, um, uh, the the CRD models that that SMI has to give. So in this case, I'm defining a TCP route to currency, and you'll notice I'm also defining things like the destination. So here, the destination is currency service. So how to get to the currency service, and I'm specifying some of the sources. So I'm providing that web can be a source and the payment service can be a source, and I'm also defining things like uh, uh, things like the namespace and so on. Uh, similarly, I'm defining a TCP route to payments, and then I'm defining the source, which is just web. So just the web service is 
is allowed to talk to the uh, to the payment service. So what I'll go is um, I'll, I'll go back here in the console UI and delete our intentions that I had created earlier, if you remember. Uh, so if I delete this, delete this. All right, so refresh this. Yeah, so now you just have this one rule that says uh, all services uh, to all services me basically there's no communication there should be no communication in the cluster so if i refresh this as you can see this is hung and we we'll still get the 503 again so since there is no rule set up so now let's go ahead and use the intentions uh, to kind of use the intentions to allow that access again but in this case we're using the smi interface and using a kubernetes native way of configuring intentions uh, without users actually being exposed to the console ui so all I have to do is kubectl apply, and then I'll apply the policy YAML that you saw. And uh, you can see we've created some of the tra traffic targets uh, and, the, and the traffic routes here. So if I go back here uh, to a console UI and refresh, you'll notice we've created three rules here. Uh, one of them is in just an extra rule, just to show you that we can just add and subtract uh, and then remove um, uh, the destination and the sources and so on. So if I go back here and I refresh, we are back to a healthy service in which the web service can call to the, uh, talk to the payment service and then uh, and then get to the currency service. Again, we are using the still kind of the, the mesh gateways to do the, uh, the to kind of bridge the two networks together fairly easily. So that's a quick demo on the the, the SMI interface implementation uh, that we have for HashiCorp console. Thank you. Hello everyone. Uh, here's a quick demo of uh, layer seven features in console. So we'll be doing uh, traffic splitting uh, using console's uh, layer 7 features. So here I have a really simple Kubernetes deployment and we'll be using Kubernetes to show you the, the kind of the, uh, the, the traffic splitting here. Uh, so I'll go to uh, the deployment here. So here we have a, a simple deployment called hello deployment and the application name is just hello. It's again using the same uh, fake service that you saw in the mesh gateways demo. Um, the, you know, Pretty much everything is consistent. This is the, the kind of the same web application, if you remember uh, from the pre previous example. Uh, what's new is I have two different deployments. One, uh, one deployment is called API version one, uh, and then the other deployment is called API version two. Uh, and both these, uh, both these are just the, the same application with two different versions with two different messages. The, the first API version, um, you know, the first API application gives you a response uh, from API one. Uh, as a message and then the the version 2 one just gives you the response from api 2 it's pretty straightforward and then we have a set of uh, smi rules uh, that help us to define uh, the interaction between the uh, the the hello service and the and the api service so so in this example the hello service will be hitting one of the versions of the api and then we'll use the traffic splitting features in console to to uh, kind of navigate traffic there so how do you set it up in console? So here I'm using something uh, something called a config map in Kubernetes to define those service defaults and resolvers that you saw uh, in the previous examples. Um, so in this case, what we're going to do is we're going to define a service default for hello, which is just a pro just the protocol definition, which is HTTP. Uh, we have the service default for API, which is HTTP as well. But for the API, we have the service resolver that say something new, something interesting, which is called a subset. So uh, a subset, uh, it's basically something that sits under the service and it's just a subset of, of the service. So in this case, we are defining two subsets, version one and version two, and they're filtered using a tag, metadata tag uh, called version. And ba basically that defines which one's version one, which one's version two. So if I go to my API example, so this is the hello application API example here in the annotations, you'll see this new uh, console uh, service meta version tag. And in this case, uh, that's version one, and then also a service stack that says that's it's version one. So that, that's basically telling you that's the version one of the API, uh, version one of the API application. In this case, that's telling you though this is the version two of the API application. So that's all set up. Now, if I uh, run this, uh, uh, if I run this uh, this deployment, if I do a traffic split YAML. So that's created a bunch of deployments and created the config map and and actually configured the um, and the, the service resolvers and then the service defaults for us and then also configured the SMI rules. So let's see if this deployment is running. If I do get pods, let me make this bigger so you can actually see a better output. So yeah, so you see we have both of these API versions running. Uh, and then if we look at our intentions uh, in the intentions uh, UI, so you'll see we have the hello and the API uh, source destination int intention set using SMI interface. So again, it's everything is 
done using Kubernetes. There's nothing that you know that's done via the, the console API yet. So now what we can do is we can actually hit this hello service and I've created this really friendly uh, domain name. You can use this uh, while you're at the presentation as well uh, to curl the service. So I'm just curling and I'm getting the, the set of upstreams, upstream calls. So if I just curl the service by itself, I'll just show you what the output looks like. Uh, so it'll show you that you know the hello service is calling an upstream API one, and then the response is coming from API one. And what I'm doing in this JQ call is I'm just grabbing the upstream, so it's easier for us to view the output here. So let me just do that. Now I'm going to just keep doing that on a loop for every uh, 0.5 seconds, and you see we're just getting the traffic to version one of the API. So we aren't really using version two yet. And there's a reason for that. So if you go back to the traffic split example here, you see the default subset here is V1. So by default, all the traffic is going to V1, right? So let's actually try to do some form of weighting here. So here's a first splitter rule that you can define in console. Again, there's not much configuration needed to do the splitting. There's no like 100 different objects that you have to create to make this traffic splitting work. Here, all I have to define is, is what subset I want to try, uh, drive the traffic to. In this case, I'm naming the, the service I want to target, which is API. I'm saying that I want a 50-50 kind of uh, percentage um, uh, of division in terms of like traffic splitting. So I'll use the console uh, CLI to uh, set this rule. So currently we just use the console CLI to do this and the future will hopefully have support of a custom Kubernetes object to do this. So if I do config right, and then I have target the config. Now you notice on the right hand, right hand side of the screen, the rules are actually set very fast. So as soon as I hit that enter on, on the left screen, you'll see uh, vv2 hopefully show up uh, immediately. So as soon as I write that, you'll see immediately we're seeing some versions of v2 show up, uh, which, are, which basically tells us that uh, the traffic is being split 50-50. So now let's uh, rewrite this and this rule and say, you know, we're happy with the version two, uh, let's turn down version one, which is the old version of our API, and say 100% of the traffic should go there. And again, this, these rules apply very fast, so let's let's notice the change. So I'm going to hit enter, and now you'll see only version two that's being shown here uh, in the in the uh, uh, in the traffic splitting of uh, Wire Console. So that's a quick demo of uh, the layer seven features that you have uh, that are available with Console version uh, one six and up. Thank you.